If you don't learn how to use Claude code, you're going to be poor. I can't code, never been able to, but this week I built systems that used to require an entire development team. So I'm talking about a Slack bot that knows everything about my business and everything about my content and can give feedback to my team in real time, a churn risk system that spots problems before they happen, and an account expansion coach that surfaces opportunities automatically when they're ripe for expansion. And I built all of this myself in a week using Claude code. If you're someone who can't code, this is going to change how you think about what's actually possible. I'm going to show you exactly what I built and why anyone who picks this up right now is five to 10 times ahead. So as an individual, there's only so many places you can be at once. There's only so many areas you can impact in the business that you're working in. You can't sit in every meeting. You can't review every decision. You can't spot every opportunity. That's the constraint that most leaders live with. So let me tell you what Claude code actually is, because that word code is a very scary word, especially for someone like me who doesn't know how to code. You don't need to know how to code. It feels like a video game because you can just describe what you want and it just builds it. And it remembers everything that you've told it. And the most important thing is all the work that you do in it it compounds over time, depending on how you set it up. I will tell you that everyone on X, formerly known as Twitter, they're all talking about it. These are all engineers and there's actually a Google engineer. She said that we tried to build something for about a year. So it took us a year to build it. I asked Claude Code to do it. It took an hour for Claude Code to build it. And she's like, I'm not joking with you. This is how crazy it is. And somebody else who responded to that, that person worked at Gemini. He actually helped build out Google's Gemini and he now works at Anthropic. And he said that the six years that it took me to build up all my, my initial engineering skills, if if I had these agentic tools like a Claude code today, it probably would have only taken me a couple months. And so that is the time acceleration that you're seeing right now. And I see other people tweeting that they feel that the 10,000 hours of work that they put in as engineers, coders, that they feel like that is now a commodity, that is now a commoditized skill. And my CTO, to his credit, he saw this happening two years ago, maybe even three years ago or so. And so all that to say is this power, the power of coding is now in your hands. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a leader of, of a company right now. I don't care if you're someone that's a teenager watching this right now. And I, I would encourage you to send this to everybody that's watching this because I am shouting this from the rooftop right now. I'm telling all my founder friends, I'm sending, yesterday I was sending a text message to my text, one of my, my founder groups. And I was like, who here is using cloud code? If you're not doing it, what are you doing right now? And I was messaging one of my other friends. I'm like, hey, what'd you do over your holiday break? He's like, all I did was cloud code. I'm like, hell yeah, right? And then someone else messaged me the other day. His business does around $40 million a year. And he's like, I'm behind on this stuff right now. I'm like, yeah, you are behind on this stuff right now. He's like, can we talk? I'm like, sure, let's talk, right? A guy messaged me yesterday, co-founded a company with David Beckham, the, the, the football player. And he's like, hey, I want to talk about this stuff, right? And so the pace has accelerated. And before I tell you these different bots that I built very quickly and how you can go about doing this yourself, I just want to tell you that this is the new year right now. We just started a new year. And the way I went into my team this year, to my leadership team especially, I went in guns blazing. The intensity got a jacket up even higher. The AI fluency we're trying to drive in my company, got to jack it up even higher. So I'm saying, look, if you want to take responsibility for yourself, if you want your business to grow faster, if you want to become wealthy, you got to take advantage of this right now. Right now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples that you can do. And you got to think about not necessarily build what I'm doing. I'm just trying to give you a couple of examples to get the ideas churning in your mind so you can go set this up yourself afterwards and understand the power that you're going to have after this. So system one is the hive mind Slack bot. So you can use Slack, you can use Microsoft Teams, whatever you use for team communication. Just imagine this. Imagine that you can take all of your internal meeting transcripts, all of your sales calls, customer calls, maybe even your all hands meetings. So it understands you, it understands how your team is dealing with certain situations. Imagine that you can ingest all of your YouTube videos. Imagine you can ingest all of your podcasts. All of the content you've ever done, you can condense it into a Slack bot. We call it single brain because single grains, my company will call it a single brain. And you can get answers based on your thinking. Not only that, it can provide feedback in certain situations. If something feels like it's going in the wrong direction, it's maybe not aligned with your goals, it can know notify you, it can notify someone on your team, it can notify the appropriate party. Then it can provide different strategies or tactics to people in different situations based on what you've done in the past. So for example, I asked, how does Eric think about value-based pricing? Or how does Eric think about pricing on value? How has he done it in the past? What's the latest in marketing school content in 2026? So it'll pull from the latest content, it'll pull from different strategies. You know, what are the latest AI trends that maybe we can bring to, you know, insert client name over here? This is interesting because this is only the very beginning of single brain. Now imagine as it continues to get advanced over time, 
brand, because I mentioned earlier, you're going to compound whatever the products that you're building because you're now a product builder. Now what's going to happen is as it gets stronger, maybe it can be very proactive and say, hey, I'm noticing that this is happening over here. And based on the goals that you have, and maybe your goals change every quarter, every year or so, you can upload the different goals that you have. And you can just have it be proactive and say, hey, sales team, I'm noticing that we haven't stayed on top of this deal over here. And this seems like a very big deal. We think you should do X, Y, and Z. And then eventually it's going to get to a point where it's like, hey, do you just want us to do it for you? So I, I just want to pause for a second. If this thing is now trained on all the data that you've ever had, all the goals that you have, and it understands where things might be dropping off and it's proactive about suggestions. And then if it can do it for you, it'll ask, would you just like me to do it for you? How much easier is your life going to be? So system number two is the churn risk mitigator. So this allows you to spot risk in real time. So what I mean by churn is if a customer seems like they're about to leave, we can have our client services people jump on that quickly. Imagine having a situation where it ingests all of your call transcripts from the last 24 hours or so, and it will surface it to Slack automatically. The way this works for us right right now is every single day at 9 a.m. it'll show you exactly hey here's what went well with this client call so I was looking at it this morning it said this call was maybe 6.5 out of 10 because this quote this quote this quote was said and this was an opportunity for us to be proactive and I remember we had someone that just came back from let's just say paternity leave okay it actually called out and said hey even though you came out from paternity leave you could have said I just came out from paternity leave and by the way I did some research I think we should be attacking x y and z so now if you're a client services leader if, or if you're the leader of that team, you can see all these things being surfaced and you can proactively attack it. Now, that's the current version of it right now, but eventually it's going to go to a version where it's, it understands all the stakeholders involved and it's going to just maybe send a direct message to all the stakeholders in that leader. And it's it's going to say, hey, here's what we're suggesting that you should do. And sometimes if you're, if you're client facing, you're going to have to just address this yourself. But in some cases, maybe an email can be drafted or if the client is in your Slack, you can send them a, you can draft a Slack message. Instead of having client churn, because churn is a killer, right? It's, 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 let me just put it to you this way. If you're losing 5% of your revenue every month, that actually means that you're going to have to replace a far greater amount. Today. Actually, I think I think it's even worse. So 5% is already really bad. I think you're going to have to replace over 50%. If you can lower that churn amount to maybe 1% or so, your business is going to grow a lot faster. Because if you think about your business, the max amount of revenue you can close per month, you have to divide it by your churn. That's actually the max amount of revenue that you can drive. Okay, you can run that formula yourself. So if you can mitigate that churn, that this automatically expands your business. Okay, you got to think about all this stuff that I'm talking about right now. Well, Eric, you know, uh, that, that, that's a lot of work right now. Well, yeah, it's a lot of work right now. But like I said earlier, the products that you build will compound. And especially if you're a leader in the business right now, if you know how to use this stuff and, and you train your team on how to use this stuff, which is what we're doing right now at my company, Single Grain, if you do that, how much further ahead are you going to be than other companies? Because I'll tell you right now, as, as kind of a side note, when I talk to people from a recruiting standpoint, people are motivated to come to Single Grain because they're saying, you know, I work for a publicly traded company right now. We're, we're, we're too risk averse. I work for another company right now. They're saying they're, they're, they want to do this stuff, but we're not doing any of it. Okay. A lot of these people, they see the writing on the wall. And so if you can adapt the sooner and you can, you can walk the talk, you are not going to only mitigate your churn. You're going to expand your surface area of luck when it comes to recruiting amazing people. Now, system number three is the account expansion coach. This allows you to spot opportunities for upsells or expansion, and this will service them to Slack in real time. Let me tell you this. This is actually a follow-up to the last bot that I was telling you about. So that one mitigates churn, but in the same vein, it takes those calls too, and it looks for expansion opportunities too. And so when it looks at these calls, if we're talking with clients, so it'll look at HubSpot close one deal. So that's our CRM. So it'll look at all the deals that we want. And if these call transcripts are continuing, that means we're likely continuing to deal with the client, right? I mean, we're not doing free work. And I'll look for opportunities where the clients might say, you know, yeah, we're actually really interested in, in trying this out, or maybe we want to do this. So that gives our team a chance to jump on this and to upsell, cross-sell. Whereas in the past, let's say if I was the only person on client services, I couldn't see these things. I'm not going to listen to every single call. So I need I need these things serviced to me. And not only that, the current version of this bot that we have right now, it actually shows the amount that we can be upselling or cross-selling based on the amount that we closed them for initially. And so that's why in your CRM, you got to make sure that you're constantly keeping it updated in terms of how big these customers are or in terms of how much the customer is paying you per month. Because then this bot will then tell you, hey, we think maybe let's say you're working with a customer they're paying you i don't know you know twenty five thousand dollars a month or something like that just making numbers up well in that case if there's an upsell opportunity maybe it's five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars a month or so so you got to help the bot help you by feeding it relevant data so the last one prevents churn which expands the opportunity to grow your business or the potential for your business this one also expands the opportunity for your business because you are now attacking upsells and expansion opportunities that you otherwise might not have seen and these are important because someone that we're interviewing right now 
just on, on the recruiting side, with the AI, we, we actually missed this person. And it wasn't until I manually went in and looked, I looked that we missed this person. I'm like, oh damn, we missed this person. We need to talk to this person, right? And and now we're, we're in final stages to hopefully bring this person on board. Now look, I'm going to give you a few other examples just to continue to get the ideas jogging for you. We have an SEO bot in Slack that is synced with our Google Search Console, Google Analytics, Ahrefs, which is an SEO tool. It'll sync in with HubSpot, Gong as well, and look for what you know prospects or customers are saying and look look at Ahrefs and service real-time keyword opportunities for us to potentially attack. Or it'll look at our analytics and look at what's performing well, and then it'll use Ahrefs to maybe look at what keywords are trending that are related to that. And then the goal of this is to have the ability to draft content briefs or even draft content directly from Slack. And then we're going to sync that with our SEO tool, ClickFlow. And so you see that? Like, I couldn't do that before. And for me, as someone who has a lot of ideas, any downtime I have, I, I can just, I can pull out my phone when I'm standing in line for lunch and could just continue to code on this. I can be on the couch and maybe during commercial breaks, during like football, for example, I can just take out my phone and, and continue to code. And I can, I can work on, you know, all these different devices. I can have all these different uh, tabs open. So this is why it feels like you're playing a video game. We have another one that will ingest all of my content because I've already ingested content before. And then each week, it's going to give me written ideas for X or LinkedIn or short form scripts. And it's going to give me, it's, it's basically content repurposing. And it's written in my voice based on top performing tweets that I've had in the past or LinkedIn posts. Okay. Guess what happens now? I have stuff that's written in my voice. Maybe it's 90% there or so, but here's the other thing. There's a lot of people that we work with right now who are, let's say the, our strategists or contractors. Okay. What happens with those costs? Can I then reduce those costs? Can I bring those in house or can I use those towards ads? I end up saving more money, but I end up getting higher quality scripts as well. And so that is a little more manual in terms of having to do the work, but it's being automatically surfaced for me every single week. Okay. Now the important thing for you is once you acquire this superpower, you don't want to just build everything under the sun. You have to keep thinking back to yourself. You have to, you have to stay focused, okay? Think about what are your personal goals for the year? What are your business goals for the year? Ideally, you're updating your bot. There's, it's known as a Claude.md. It's not a bot, but it's it's the file. It's the markdown file that you have where it guides everything that you build. You want it to make sure that there's not drift in what you're building. You, you may want to make sure that you're, whatever you're building, there's a return on investment as it relates to the goals that you have. Because if you don't, you're going to create a lot of garbage. You're going to create a lot of slop and you're going to end up wasting a lot of time. And it, this is going to be known as theater. And so this is something that we're trying to watch out for in my company right now, where we're going to teach people, we're going to arm our people with these weapons, but we're, we got to make sure that they are focused on the company goals because you're, you're paying them for, for their time. You want to make sure that they're working on the right things. Okay. I'll give you one more bonus example here. Real quick. If you are looking for a new gig and you're into marketing, we are hiring more AI forward people at Single Grain. So we're looking to hire AI forward paid media people. People, AI forward SEO people, AI forward sales people. If you're looking to join a tech enabled services business, which means a combination of technology, so SaaS and agency, then Single Ring is the company for you. So all you need to do is go to singlering.com slash careers. You can refer your friends as well. I guarantee you this is going to be the best place for people to grow who want to be AI forward and who want to be cutting edge when it comes to marketing. So again, singlering.com slash careers. This is known as the deal resurrector that I'm working on right now. Let's say you have a lot of deals in your CRM that you lost. Okay, close. You're not going to win every proposal that you do, right? So whether it's a software deal or a services deal, we have a lot of deals, maybe in the last 12 months or 24 months or so that we pitched them, but we lost the deal. But oftentimes people are going to come back to agencies like ours and they might be interested at in giving us another shot. Okay. And maybe, maybe the timing wasn't right, whatever it is exactly. And then people get busy, people forget. Now, you can leverage something like a deal resurrector that will look at HubSpot CRM, it'll look at Gong, it'll look at all the things that you've pitched. Maybe you can you can even sync in Google Slides as well, look at what you pitched exactly. And you can do deep research using Perplexity as an example. And Perplexity will do deep research seeing if the company made any changes, maybe they, they hired a new CMO, maybe they raised another round of funding or maybe they went in a different direction and then they can draft an email for you, okay? Even if you can revive five deals for you or maybe 10 deals for you and you can win three of them, guess what? That expands your business. That's lost money. That's found money that you otherwise wouldn't have had. This is why Cloud Code is amazing. Sure, you can build a lot of these things using agentic workflow tools, but there are limitations because what Cloud Code does is it compounds, meaning that you can continue to build on the product. Not saying you can't do that with, with agentic workflows, but with agentic workflows, like using a Lindy or a Zapier, for example, I have an example of that, the client expansion, client churn tool. But the problem with that is the version that I build, it can become very encumbered and it does it also doesn't have memory it, it's not going to look at all the transcripts that i've done i can't ingest everything every time i'm running it, it's more of a one-off in the last 24 hours or so so 
with Claude Code, I can see over time, I can have a leaderboard, I can see how people are improving over time, I can see if they've taken actions on this over time. I cannot do that with Lindy or a, a Zapier, at least right now. With Claude Code, it's also good because you can literally start from planning. There's a planning tool in Claude Code. You can click on plan. It's going to ask you a bunch of clarifying questions and you're actually building a product. You can work with, with Claude Code to build an actual UI, a website, all these things. And you can you can plan with other products too, like, like uh, you know, Gemini has um, anti-gravity. You can use that as well. But the key thing for me is whenever I run into problems with Claude Code in the past, I wouldn't know how to fix these problems. Claude Code will tell me exactly what I need to do or or it'll just fix the problem for me. And here's the thing, I, I mentioned this right now, you're like, oh my God, how do I use this? Claude Code can teach you how to use Claude Code. And so when you go into this, like, how do I use this? What do I do to do exactly? How do I use this more efficiently? And, and for, for example, for me, I had a bunch of files that were compounding and I realized how unorganized it was. I was like, hey, Claude Code, I, this is my file system or my, my organizational system. I, I don't seem to have one. Can you help me organize this? And it literally organized everything for me. And so you basically have, you have the power of something that's smarter than maybe 90% of people, maybe even more than that, to be honest. If you start learning this right now, the more data you feed it, the better it's going to understand you, the better it's going to understand your business. By the way, you can use it for personal stuff too, like you know your, your blood work, your genetic testing and things like that. All you have to do right now is figure out how to go set up Claude Code. There's a lot of videos on how to set this up right now using the Opus 4.5 model because the Opus 4.5 model, that's what actually what made Claude Code way more amazing than what it was before you just start learning and, and then i would recommend that you go on x you go see what people are doing and then you join different communities out there there's even a cloud code for marketers course if you if you google that you should be able to find it there's learn cloud code and cloud code i think that's a course as well you can go and, and and find that again anyone who picks this up right now if you're an engineer you're probably five to ten times faster for me having no coding skills i'm probably 15 to 20 times faster so most leaders right now are waiting to see if ai is is real they're waiting to see if the, what the roi is you don't have time for that. You might think you have time. You might think you have time to wait this out. I'll tell you, if you're working for a company right now, you don't figure this out and they're too slow, this company is going to be in big trouble in, in the next couple of years and very quickly. And if you're in a company right now that is adopting this stuff and they're moving very quickly, I guarantee you they can see if you're not trying to move on this stuff. Okay, so if you want to save yourself and future-proof yourself, I'm not trying to fear monger right now. I'm just saying this is what it is. This is practical. So look, I built all this in a week, the hive mind, the churn risk system, the account expansion coach, and I can't code. Whatever I build right now is going to compound as the business grows, the systems will get smarter, the insights will get better, and that's the part people aren't understanding yet. So if you're a leader and you pick this up right now, you're gonna be five, 10, 15, 20 times ahead of everyone who's still waiting around. So look, I've got another video on AI and SEO strategies that we're running. You can check that out over here.